Everybody, Brian Alvarez here on Wrestling Observer Live. We are here every day, Monday through Friday, noon Pacific, 3 Eastern, Sunday, 3 Pacific, 6 Eastern. A lot to get into here today on the program, Monday here on the show. You know what that means. Raw is tonight, and we have got WrestleMania coming up. This weekend, two nights of WrestleMania. You going to be there? Saturday and Sunday. Now my wife's trying to get me to go to WrestleMania. I'm not going. I told you all. Man, we got a lot to get into here today. We have the Raw lineup for tonight. Yeah, you know, I always talk about how uh, everyone always goes, Oh, you know, Brian Dave, plans change, cop out, blah, blah, blah. Well, uh, WWE put up a graphic on uh, their social media announcing that Ronda Rousey was going to be on the show tonight. But uh, apparently they didn't send her a plane ticket. So uh, she had to alert the world that she's not on the show tonight. And then they took down the graphic for the match that they'd announced for Monday on social media. Anyway, we'll tell you what is on Raw tonight, because it is a uh, fairly packed show here. We've also got new entrants into the WWE Hall of Fame, which I find to be great news. I'll tell you why after the break. We got New Japan announcing their Hyper Battle Show, which is April 9th. The winner of the New Japan Cup is facing Okada for the championship. And if for some reason you have not watched the New Japan Cup, these aren't spoilers, brother. The show happened a while ago. So we're going to go over the results here on the show today, talk about that. I've seen the semifinals of the Cup, the main event of the Cup. I've seen the Stardom main event night one, Stardom main event night two, the Kyrie match from Stardom. I've seen SmackDown. I've seen Rampage. Am I missing anything? New Japan Strong. I've watched New Japan Strong. So there's a lot to talk about from those shows. We got a Tuesday lineup for the NXT show, which is the go-home show for Stand and Deliver, and, uh, and plenty more. So I don't even know where to start. But you know what? We've already started. Back in a moment, Observer Live. Observer.com. we got a million things to talk about here today. Ronda Rousey says she will not be on Raw tonight. WWE posted a graphic to Facebook on Sunday that indicated she would be on Monday's show. It featured Rousey along with Bianca, Charlotte, and Becky. However, Rousey refuted that she would be on Raw during a Sunday Facebook live stream. WWE has since deleted the graphic. I'm not going to be at Raw tomorrow, she said, responding to a question from the chat. I think that's a mistake or something, because if I was going to be at Raw tomorrow, I would be leaving today. So no, I'm not going to be there, because I'm here. However, she will be on SmackDown. Always, always fun to see the left hand not knowing what the right hand is doing and plans changing, and then I get yelled at for being a horrible reporter. But anyway, tonight on Raw, we got the Street Profits versus the Alpha Academy. We have the Usos versus RK Bro. Because, you know, it's that one time a year, everybody, that stars from Raw and SmackDown face off in big matches. And that one time a year is all year. We've got Natalia, Shayna, Carmella, and Zelina against Liv, Rhea, Naomi, and Sasha. We got Rey Mysterio versus The Miz. And we have Seth Rollins claiming that he has a meeting with Vince McMahon. I'm not advocating this or anything like that, and I don't think you'd make any money, but I wonder if you actually could, like, you know, do a complaint to uh, NBC Universal Peacock. You spent money to to buy Peacock to watch Survivor Series because it's the one time a year that Raw and SmackDown wrestlers face off against each other. And you paid your money, and then they just keep facing off against each other all year long. I mean, maybe you could sue for like $4.99. You'd probably waste a lot of your own money doing that. But anyway, they're all going to be on the show tonight because it's that one time a year that Raw and SmackDown wrestlers go head to head. You don't sound so excited. It's WrestleMania week. Actually, Come I think on. that, uh, I, I mean, I keep saying this and no one believes me, but I think WrestleMania is going to be pretty good both nights. Oh. But I just, no matter what I say, everyone gets mad. I, oh, I, all you do is say negative things about WWE. Well, I think the two shows are going to be good. Oh, you don't mean that. <laughs> Bro, <laughs> dude, if I thought WrestleMania was going to suck, you don't think I'm going to tell you? Well. Well, of course I would tell you. I'll tell you if Ross sucks tonight. I think WrestleMania night one and night two are going to be pretty good. Am I going? No, I'm not going. 
But well, I think they're going to be pretty good shows. If you think about it, once you take out all the Gaga and everything, when you leave it to the wrestlers who are doing what they're doing in the ring, even if you don't like some of the finishes because you know it's to set up Raw or to set up Backlash or whatever, whereas your traditional mind with WrestleMania, you want things to come to an end, you want definitive finishes, things like that. When it's left from bell to bell, the people that are involved, I mean, they're showing off. They're showing out. It's WrestleMania. The matches are usually great. It's all the other stuff that leads into it. And unfortunately, I, I mean, maybe things pick up this week, but really you have more people, I think, than ever looking at each other going, are you all this excited? Is this the worst build to a WrestleMania ever? Is this the most tired build? to WrestleMania ever, and the bottom line is we'll see how it goes. I mean, you know, Peacock can say whatever they want about their numbers. Xfinity is a publicly traded company. Maybe they'll release some of them or something like that. I have no idea. They probably won't. They'll just say in terms of uh, terms of hours how many people have watched WrestleMania or something like that, so we'll never truly really know. But this has been a pretty whack limp into WrestleMania, in my opinion, and I think I'm not, maybe I'm in the minority on that when it comes to WWE fans, but I think when it comes to wrestling fans, I think it's kind of the same way. And I'm interested to see with people not traveling as much, even though people can travel. It seems with inflation, it seems with gas, it seems for a lot of reasons, people may not be traveling in hordes to, to WrestleMania this year, which I wonder how that actually impacts everybody on the indie scene who is desperately trying to get a piece of that pie and desperately trying to, for those people who don't go to the shows this year, trying to get all of their money via iPay-Per-View, which is, again, it really can be costly by the time you, you know, tack everything up for the weekend. One of the greatest tag teams of all time is set to take their place in the WWE Hall of Fame. It was announced via The Ringer today that the Steiner brothers will be inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame on Friday. They join The Undertaker, Vader, Queen Charmel, and Warrior Award recipient Shad Gaspard in this year's Hall of Fame class. Ceremony taking place after SmackDown at the American Airlines Center in Dallas this Friday. This will be the first time that Scott Steiner has appeared for WWE in nearly two decades. Scott was banned from attending the 2015 Hall of Fame ceremony after an incident with Hulk Hogan's then-wife where he allegedly threatened Hogan. The day after the Hall of Fame ceremony, Rick Steiner's son Braun Breaker will challenge Dolph Ziggler for the NXT title at Stand and Deliver. Rick was in the audience when Breaker won the NXT title for the first time. So, yes, uh, WWE and Scott Steiner have not been on good terms. And, <laughs> um, you know, if you've watched, like, one one Braun Breaker match, I mean, it's it's abundantly clear that they're not allowed to say that he's a Steiner. But it's weird, as we've mentioned, they're not allowed to say that he's a Steiner using those words like, you know, he's the son of Rick Steiner. But they can say everything else. He's a dog-faced gremlin. You know, he, uh, there was uh, the push-ups and the elbow drop in the match with uh, Robert Roode, and it was pointed out, well, we know who that's a reference to. But well, they wouldn't tell you who it was a reference to. So this the Steiner name has been banned. But... I think it's possible that now that WWE and Scott are on good terms and Rick and St uh, Scott are going into the Hall of Fame, I am hoping that that means that tomorrow on NXT, all of a sudden, it's okay to mention that Braun Breaker is the son of Rick Steiner. What would be even better if he became Rex Steiner and we could move on and... Or Bronson Rex Steiner, or whatever you want to call it. just Bronson guy. Steiner would be pretty badass. Right well, there, Vince seems but... like the word Braun, the name Braun. Because, you yeah, know, but I, he's I think they've Braun means that strong. One. Yeah, and, well, uh, he's strong as hell. Bronson, look, it's a badass look. Charles Bronson, Action Bronson, you know, Bronson Steiner. That's a strong, strong name. But I guess it comes Bro, down to. Bro, hold on who... a second. Before you go, go on. Yes. Listen. Yes. And I mentioned this with uh, Vinny Marsegli. I think that's a great name. And he goes mm -hmm. as Vincent. It's like, what a waste. <laughs> like, if your actual name was <laughs> well, Vincent, <laughs> you would want to use the name Vinny Marsegli in wrestling because it's like an awesome name. <laughs> Let's think about the name Bronson Rex Steiner, okay? Bro, 
I know you guys all out. hate Braun Breaker, the name Braun Breaker and everything. Come up with a better name. Come up with a better wrestling name than Bronson Rex Steiner. Bronson, you know, you got the word brawn in it because big, burly, brawny. You get the Brontosaurus, one of the largest dinosaurs. The name Bronson is like a, that's a wrestling name if you ever heard one. This is a tough guy name. Yeah. Everyone knows the Steiners, and you're adding the word wreck to the word Steiner. Bronson Rex Steiner. Brother, come on. <laughs> no, Brick Steiner is not better. That's a pretty good name, but it's not Brick. better than Bronson <laughs> Rex oh, no. Steiner. You guys have completely well, we call taken him Braun this. Breaker. You guys have completely taken this too far. You're you're over. You're way over analyzing this, which is very simply. Yeah, Rex there's Steiner. another one, Miroslav Barnyashev. Oh, because well. <laughs> they can't let a guy use his real name, he's got to be, uh, you know, uh, Rusev. You're, 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 well, Alexander Rusev Miroslav Barnyashev. That is a badass name. Find but a better name. For marketing purpose purposes, I can see why they went Alexander Rusev, and that was still a mighty name when he was when he first jumped off. But bottom line here is the Steiners not only belong in, in the WWF or WWE Hall of Fame, they they belong in the Wrestling Observer Newsletter Hall of Fame. And it looks like this year's voting is going to have a a new focus on tag teams there's a bunch that are being added to the equation jack and jerry briscoe are being added the young bucks are going to be on there ricky steamboat and jay youngblood and the steiners have been on there and there has been a real swell of people over the last couple of years that point to how influential and how powerful of a team that they were and again short period of time in tag team wrestling has never really gotten the due uh that it, i believe that it deserves to have but i think the rick and scott steiner a uh, champions wherever they went wwf wcw uh new japan pro wrestling and as influential as any tag team of their era back in a moment observer live glock rex steiner appears to be the winner i don't know unless you uh, want to go with frank n steiner kind of like that one <laughs> <laughs> Glock Rex Steiner. Glock. Well, see, you're making it too difficult with the rack. You're really hung up on this rack part. You just need Glock well, not Steiner. not hung up on it, but it yes, rolls off the tongue better. No, it doesn't. Glock Steiner. If it rolled off the tongue better, that's Glock their real Rex that's Steiner. Their shoot, that's their shoot name. Their shoot name is Rex the, Steiner, you idiot. Yeah, and you're turning it into Rex Steiner. It's the same thing. Effects, no, I'm Rex not. I'm keeping Steiner. the last name Rex Steiner and adding a first name, either Braun or Glock. Have you been listening to a word I've been saying? Yes, and you've way overthought this, and you've caused other people to do so as well. Ed says Glock is a shoot. Oh, Jesus. Oh, no. Uh, silly. You're silly, silly people. No, I'm not moving on, DJ. I'm going to start talking about hair next. Uh, I do what I want God. on this show. You should. It's your show. All right. New Japan has announced a full card for their next event, Hyper Battle. The winner of the New Japan Cup 2022, Zack Sabre Jr. You couldn't beat him. Will be in what? In anything. Checkers? In anything. In anything. In Checkers, anything. chess, workout I regime, I couldn't beat push Zack ups. Sabre Jr. in anything. No, nothing. See, you could actually have had like a fun little discussion if you were like, you know, you couldn't out grapple him. But now oh. you're like, he, I couldn't beat him. Let's have a podcasting contest. I don't think contest. in anything. Oh, I don't think in anything. He could probably do, he could probably out, out, out do you there too. I mean, look at your record he right now. He could beat me in a drinking contest. Sure. And, uh, and like, a, I'm sure he'd have a way Hindu better squats. worked match yeah. than me. That's, that's yeah. I mean. I mean, look, you are you have been really, really missing the, the, your, your finger on the pulse of things here recently. Okay? No, actually, and, I haven't. You're the one that's, uh, you no. know, a year behind. I've been putting Zack Sabre really? Jr. over for months and months now. No, well, and I couldn't help I also... but notice I was the first guy that noted mm -hmm. that he had yeah. put on a bunch of weight and he actually mm -hmm. looked significantly better. No, and, basically uh, somehow, what you were just trying to do is somehow, save your argument from being so against that guy for so I'd long. Heard, all I'd heard was... Making mistakes as you keep doing it, like going against, I don't know, your former teammate, Phil Healthy Tom Lawler, the current New Japan strong uh, I'm gonna have to champion. mute you because you sound like you're underwater here. But you know all oh, I heard. Yeah. <laughs> all I heard was, "Oh, Brian, Zack Saber Jr. If he puts on any weight or any muscle, 
the gimmick just isn't going to work anymore. He's got to be skeletal in order to make this gimmick work. And I said, bro, that is the biggest load of you this know is, what I ever heard. This that is guy an could argument put on, you made up. That guy, no, it's not. Yes, Where it, have it, you been? This is something you've made up in your own mind because you've been calling this guy chicken I chest have for heard so long. This for years. Nobody else, everybody else played it as part of his what his gimmick was and the fact that he was an undersized heavyweight that would bring it to these guys. But one of the things he always had working against him was ultimately his size, with the exception of Sonata, who would always somehow out technically, he would somehow get the advantage over him. With everybody else, that was the hole in his game. That was the weakness and the arsenal of facing off against these big guys. You just wanted to make fun of the guy for so long. Oh, really? Yeah. And this talk guy about goes, his chest and then go, well, you know, he's been uh, putting on weight here recently. You? This guy oh, says, God. I remember people telling brian that lol though he did also call him a chicken chest for years see people forget everything i'm not the one that came up with chicken chest for zach saber jr that was juice robinson he did commentary on a show in an entire the entire match he talked about how skinny this chicken chest was i get the heat for it turns out now zach has put on 25 pounds he looks way better it hasn't affected his wrestling at all he's as good or better than he's ever been it wins a new exactly. Japan Cup. And you would and you would bemoan his wrestling ability because you couldn't get by the, the visual of seeing this. I couldn't. Chest but you know what? There. I can now. Oh, for heaven's sake. So sakes. here you go. I hope he strangles you and then he whatever's do, left he over. Ain't do filthy nothing. Tom filthy Tom stomps out of you. Yeah, you know what we should do? You. you know what we should do, Mike, is uh we should we should uh invite Zach to the Brazilian steakhouse. We'll have an eating contest. Since he can beat me at anything. Well, you're oh! right. I may have made a mistake oh! there. There's no How one who can shove that? Yeah, more How meat in their that? mouth than you, Brian Alvarez. How about that? Look at you. You are a We sorry, got Desperado sorry. and Show for the junior heavyweight title. Goto and Yoshihashi versus the Great Okan and Jeff Cobb for the tag team titles. Evil versus Hiromu. Oh, God, help me. For the never open weight title. <laughs> Toru Yano versus Taichi for the trophy. Yeah, let's get Taichi having a whole bunch of awesome matches. Now we'll shove him in with Toru Yano for a King of Pro Wrestling 2022 trophy. I hate that thing. Gucci and Master Wato versus Fantasmo and Taiji Shimori for the junior tag titles. Naito and Shingo versus Will Ospreay and Hanare. And Jado Tamatanga, Tangalo and Hiroshi Tanahashi versus Bad Luck Fale, Ghetto, Yujiro, Chase Owens. That will be taking place on April 9th. At Hyper Battle. And in fact, we had three New Japan Cup matches this weekend. Okada and Naito, which Naito won, was a very, very good match. Zack and Naito in the finals, and Zack and Shingo, excellent matches. Some people are saying Zack and Shingo match of the year. I wouldn't go that far. But it was a pretty awesome match. Same with Zack and Naito in the finals. Naito is, uh, I don't know what happened. Actually, I actually do know what happened. He took a bunch of breaks. But he's working a lot better. He doesn't look like he's, you know, near death anymore. Moving better. So, uh, three, I mean, I watched those three matches uh, all back-to-back because I I watched everything last night. And watching those three matches back-to-back, it was like I was watching a really good Tokyo Dome show. The last half of a very good Tokyo Dome show. Three awesome matches. And uh, I don't want to get heat, but I'm gonna. I wouldn't say it blew the stardom show out of the water. But I would say that the three New Japan Cup matches that I watched were better than the three stardom matches that I watched. Not to take anything away from them, but Siri and Julia, Siri and Mayu Iwatani, and Kairi and Starlight Kid. uh, The two main events I thought were very good matches. I did not think they were like match of the year caliber matches. And uh, honestly, honestly, I'll talk more about this on The Filthy Show, which by the way today is 5 Pacific 8 Eastern. I kind of enjoyed that Kyrie match more than the other two. Is that going to make people mad? And I couldn't help but note that last night at the Oscars, we had a shoot slap that did significantly, significantly less damage than the worked slap that Starlight Kid gave Kyrie, where she busted her eardrum. Now Kyrie can't hear anymore. Hopefully she ends up all right. A lot of heat. A lot of heat from me on that one. I need to get a faction going and start them and send them after Starlight Kid. She's on my list. But Kyrie won. 
just crushed her with her elbow. She, it's called a receipt, kids. She put all 109 pounds into it, crushed her and pinned her. I like that match a lot. But yeah, we'll have more. Uh, we'll have more this afternoon with Filthy. I'll see what I can watch. But uh, seeing as every single one of these matches except the Kyrie match was uh, right around the 30 minute mark, bro. You know, I want to say one other thing. Get me more heat, but that's what I do here. So we had a question the other day, and it was someone going, how come Starlight hasn't gotten more traction in the United States? And listen, I love these matches. I love watching stardom. I, I watch these shows. I talk about the main events with, uh, with Tom and everything like that. But do you realize that between the first night of the stardom show and the second night of the stardom show, there were nine hours of... Of stardom this weekend. Nine hours. And of course, if you wanted to watch Rampage, SmackDown, New Japan Cup. Nine hours. That is a lot. So. I'm a little confused. What traction does this person want Starlight Kid to have? No, stardom. All of stardom. Stardom. All all of stardom. Well, I may have said (laughs) Starlight. All of stardom. Yes. Yeah, four and a half hours the first night, four and a half hours the second night, four and a half hours each night. I, honest to God, and you can find this hard to believe, I don't believe that WrestleMania is going to be four and a half hours the first night and four and a half hours the second night. I actually think it's going to be shorter than that. So anyway, it's hard to gain well, traction when you've got that much product coming out of, you know, if you're a hardcore stardom fan, you don't watch anything else, it's like a glory period. It's like the greatest thing that ever happened. But it is very hard to to gain traction. Dude, I try and watch as much as I can. I literally got the two main events in the Kyrie match, and that was that was uh, 90 minutes right there. Three yeah, matches. Brian, I, I don't think somebody's got to make the investment for four and a half hours. I mean, they can't. They're, they're big shows, so they're obviously going to be putting on you know these showcase shows that do go for a long time. But I think it's a matter of just marketing these women i mean really when it comes down to it and making sure everyone knows hey you know did you see the name utami hayashishida you know listed in the observer well you got to see this person and building those people up because the matches themselves only go you know you can watch a 20 minute match and you can make sure that that gets out there and i think they've done a good job as far as stardom world as far as being able to you know put a lot of their stuff into english it's just a matter of exposing people to it and really driving home to people why it's important to see these women. And I believe maybe with, say maybe, with things opening up again, the more you see these women make their way to Defy Cards and make their way to West Coast Pro and to GCW and to AEW and you see them, that's going to be the best way that they can do it and try to get some foothold amongst American fans because otherwise, I mean, it's tough the way the pie is. Back in a moment, Observer Live. We'll talk more about stardom and everything this afternoon with Filthy Tom. I think Tom also saw the uh, New, Japan, uh, New Japan Cup semis and finals, and then uh, he's seen everything I've seen on stardom, and I think more. And also, SmackDown and New Japan Strong. New Japan Strong was a good show, too. That was a really good show. And uh, SmackDown was... Uh, you ever heard the term, a nothing happening show? I have. Boy, was that a nothing happening show. <laughs> like, nothing happened. But, you know, I mean, I, I, will, give them, I will give them credit that... Uh, and this actually is another thing I'll talk about with Tom later, as far as, like, stardom uh, gaining traction in the U.S. Uh, long story short, if, you, if you've never watched stardom in your life, and, uh, and you watched the show on uh, either, the, either of the nights... You would enjoy the wrestling. You would have no earthly idea what's going on. Zero. There's 50 million factions. There's history going back a decade or whatever. You would be lost. But you'd see awesome wrestling. Whereas if you watch the SmackDown show, you know what you would not see? Awesome wrestling. (laughs) But what you would do, you would know everything about everything going into WrestleMania. And, you know, somebody that watches all the shows, I just watch these shows, I'm like, oh, my God, I got to watch this again? <laughs> but there's a point, and the point is, you know, they're on national television, 
And uh, if you've never watched WWE before and you stumble upon SmackDown, when that show's over, you're going to know every major WrestleMania match and why it's happening with details. And you won't be confused about it. So that, I mean, you know, there, there, it seems like there should be like a happy medium where I can watch a show, you know, have a good idea, the main characters, what's going on, but, you know, not be confused, but also, you know, get a little good wrestling. There was like nothing on this SmackDown show of, of any real note. The two longest matches were seven minutes and they included commercial breaks. So we're talking like a lot less than that. And uh, the rest of it was just angle, 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 recap, recap, recap. And then the whole story was for an hour, uh, you were waiting for Brock Lesnar. He was in uh, Roman Reigns' locker room. And uh, the story was that Roman was going to show up in the locker room, provoke Brock. Brock would beat him silly, and you'd get to see some violence. Instead, he waited and he waited for two hours. And then Roman went down to the ring instead of the locker room. And then Brock started to go down to the ring. And uh, keep in mind, the storyline was Brock is only allowed to touch Roman if he's provoked. So Roman goes down to the ring. Brock starts to come out. Apparently nobody told Roman about this provocation thing because Roman and the Usos just get scared and they leave. And they left and that was the end of SmackDown. Brock beat up some nerds, but yeah, that was the show. Not... I would say the greatest SmackDown of all time. No, nah, but you know, if you missed it, any of those video packages that uh, you may have missed, don't worry. They've added on to them, and you'll get to see them again coming up this Friday on SmackDown, and then you'll get to see those same video packages before all of the matches that have something to do with SmackDown on one of the two nights of WrestleMania that'll take place. So if you're concerned about missing those great video packages, you've still got plenty more time. So we've got the uh, NXT show, which is coming up on uh, Tuesday. Last chance qualifier. Roderick Strong, Cameron Grimes, and A-Kid. Literally, literally, the champion said, I'm putting all of you losers together, and we'll find out which one of you can finally succeed. Well, be in the ladder match. One of those losers invoked his father's name, and you're believing that's the reason that he may get the yes. victory here. But are you and the sure victory. you don't want to change that? No. You got, you got time. No. Okay. No. Okay. No matter what happens, I always have a sliver of hope. Really? You've made fun of me forever having that sliver of hope, so I'm well, supposed to Well, sometimes you have a yours. sliver of hope over something that there's, it's just hopeless. You're hopeless. L.A. Knight and Still MSK a lining for you. versus Imperium, which should be a lot of fun. Yes. Old Bodie Hayward's going to face Von Wagner. Is it wrong I'm excited to see that match? Who is the heel here? Who are, is it? Is Von it Wagner's Robert? the heel. And Von, so, so. Bodie Hayward is a baby face. So is Chase a baby Chase face? Chase is a baby face. <laughs> it's ridiculous. It's beyond ridiculous. Gotcha. Legato del Fantasma against uh, Briggs and the Virgin. They should just give that as his nickname. <laughs> the Virgin. I mean, they Coming used to have next like on Briggs Skinner and the Virgin. And, you know, they gave people these lame gimmicks back when it was. Uh, it should be Briggs and the Virgin. Well, what's the muse's name? What is, what is her? Preston? What is her name? Oh, the, uh, uh, what's her name? Taisley? Daisy Duke? Please. Whatever it is. Come on. Paisley. Oh, whatever. It's, I'm not thinking of that. Whatever her name was. Disgusted. Will it's, you stop? It's, uh, what the hell's her name, everybody? Fallon Henley. Fallon Henley. Fallon Henley. Fallon. I keep thinking Hayden Fallick, which is one of our uh, listeners. Uh, Hayden Fallick? Hayden Fallick is actually very close to Fallon Henley, when you think about it, just backwards. Is Now, is that a real name, or is that like a takeoff of like Hayden Fox and Fallick no, it's a real name. Don't make fun of Hayden Fallick's name. Is it Joe Gacy a P or, an, or what? Wait, how was this spelled? Because I, I might make fun of it. Uh, He's nowhere around to try to like walk up and slap me, and I'm Joe, not Chris Rock. So Joe you Gacy go ahead. and Draco Anthony, Tiffany right, Stratton me. and Ivy Nile, and Nikita Ooh, Lyons Stratton. versus TBA. The, <laughs> We're gonna have the good, the bad, and the ugly on this show, everybody. I'm telling you right now. Hey, it, it could go from look. It, could that TBA be Lash? Could be. No, they announced that. Oh, <laughs> They should. That's a, is more of a uh, 
the locker room uh, curtain sell out there for that one? Now, I should note that uh, Tiffany Stratton and Ivy Nile have been practicing their match for a straight week now. So it better be all right. Because if it's not... Well, and those are two people that obviously they're invested in and they have unique looks. They have ways to get over. Tiffany Stratton's path, I believe, is going to be much, much easier for what she looks like and as tall as she is in comparison to Ivy Nile. But look, there's this is going to be a test for Nile, too, because is she just going to be a background member? Can you get anything out of her moving forward that you could see away from the diamond mine? This would be a good chance to show it, you know, against somebody who is a gymnast, is a high level. Again, both of these women are physically incredibly gifted. So for both of them, it's going to be, you know, a big deal. But again, for Stratton, there's almost nothing I think that could happen in this match where they are not trying to ascend her as fast as possible to the next level. I'm going to attempt to read this next story without comment. On Monday, WWE and The Ringer announced a Spotify-exclusive podcast called The Book of Wrestling, a 25-episode series with each focusing on a specific catchphrase and related stories from the Attitude Era. Hosted by David Shoemaker, the series will launch on April 4th with new episodes dropping every weekday for five weeks. Concept is based off Ringer founder Bill Simmons' The Book of Baseball, which has moved over from book to podcast form. Shoemaker is an author and the host of the weekly Masked Man show on The Ringer and Spotify. David will talk to the people, it says here, who either played a part in creating the catchphrase or were there to witness its impact on the wrestling community. There you go. What? You, want, you wanted to, why did you give that a, uh, a warning beforehand here that you were trying to do this without comment? Because I don't want to comment on someone else's podcast. You didn't have to. I don't want to come across as a a critic. Well. But how are you, are name, you not how impressed are with you the gonna do? How are you going to do 25 podcasts about catchphrases? Well. Good luck to him. You can be done. Think about it. You could do. I'm sure it can be done. Yeah. Look, I don't. I didn't see what the baseball, the book of baseball, and how that whole thing came to pass. So there's obviously a formula there that they are working off of. Now, there have been cases where formulas have not worked the the best the second time around. We've seen that with the dark side of the ring spin-offs that vice has tried to do for different things with the football and with other things and they fall in flat but that's also not been the producers of the dark side of the rings it's been other people that they've tried to latch on and use that with whereas this sounds like it's bill simmons baby they have a formula for it so hey look it's creating content with a partner and it's like getting upset about Corey and carmella doing a, a reality show like what? Why not? <laughs> you know, I'm not upset cares? about it, but my point you know? is, it seems clear from this uh, this press release here that they have access to like anybody that they want from WWE. And I'm trying to think about if if I had access to anybody I wanted in WWE and I could do like 25 podcasts, I there's got to be a better idea than we're going to talk about some catchphrases from 25 yeah, years but ago. But Brian, look, it, I don't know if that's necessarily the case. Maybe it's something where they were trying to, to increase access or trying to work with things and they were spitballing back and forth and they said, hey, we had this successful podcast venture that did numbers for us. It did numbers for Bill Simmons or The Ringer or whoever you know it would be and maybe this is an idea and WWE goes, okay and these guys had a different idea but WWE wants to push Attitude Era and we could do this and this and it's like like, okay, so maybe they were, you know, again, I'm sure there was maybe a process back and forth that may have led to this. I mean, I don't know if this is something WWE had commissioned and, and said, okay, now we're going to do this. Or, um, you know, conversely, the ringer said, hey, we can do anything we want here. Here's the only idea that we have. You know, we really just don't know. So I'm to make a list As- of 25 catchphrases. Where are, we, are we scraping the bottom of the barrel here at the end? No, because here's the thing. If you go, okay, suck it. Well, okay, that whole thing can be about 
DX. If it's because oh, Stone I can't Cold wait said to, so. that actually I'll listen to that podcast. <laughs> I want to hear in 2022 them talk about suck it on a <laughs> podcast on Spotify. That actually I would listen to that one. But I'm but that's what I'm saying. Like you you take whatever the term is. Do you smell what the rock is cooking? Okay, that one's all on the rock. Okay, this one now we're all talking about the nation or this or that, and so it can be done easily. And you just basically use it again. You use it as a muse to get to meander to other things, and you can draw it back to that oh, catchphrase yeah. at the end of the broadcast. But I think again, I the concept. I I know what you're saying, and as far as episode what twenty three, your ass better call some. Somebody. Tonight on Spotify, we're going to talk. Well, actually, we can't talk to Mr. Ass. He's unavailable. But episode 36, you know, do you like pancakes? Yeah. Remember that one? <laughs> no. Yes. With him and Billy Gunn. Why don't you pancake your ass back to Chicago? It was that epic, the one Billy Gunn versus the Rock feud after he won the King of the Ring. You can kiss my royal ass, Billy Gunn. Hmm. <laughs> Got some other. Which, we got, by the way, does he own that name yet? Isn't he going through some copyright? I don't know, but right I'm, I'm looking at some of the options right here for uh, podcasts, <laughs> such as uh, "You Think You Know Me." You, well, you think you know? Yeah, there you go. About Edge. the uh, background of that one, Christian. At last, you're on your own. Uh, what else do we have? Stand back. There's a hurricane coming through. This is a lot easier than you yeah, think, homie. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, stand it's up. A lot easier than you think. This first wants to know if we can get my hole. I wish. <laughs> Episode 12, I Love Head Cheese. Episode 24, I'm an Ass Man. (laughs) Episode 10, The People's Strudel. Back in a moment, Observer Live. Yes, it's true. I'm very much looking forward to episode 4. Pimping Ain't Easy. There you go. We're going to talk about this here in 2022. Put over all those hoes. From hey, back man, in some the day. Hoes. Was... Hey, one of those hoes was Ivory, man. You can't put the you can put her over any day of the week. Hey, listen, I got a couple of important things to say. <laughs> First off, the Filthy Tom Lawler show is being delayed this afternoon. It will air at 5 Pacific, 8 Eastern. 5 Pacific, 8 Eastern. Video.f4wonline.com. Live video there. And, of course, the podcast is going to be up afterwards. And if you're a fan of uh, video shows and also a fan of things being free, if you go to my Twitter right now, at Brian Alvarez, I've retweeted a couple of links, actually. I did a video podcast with Phil Strum. Under the ring for USA Today. You can check it out right now. We talked about WrestleMania and what I actually think the biggest story going into and coming out of WrestleMania is going to be. But I'm not going to spoil it here. you got to listen to the Phil Strum podcast, Under the Ring, with myself, Brian Alvarez. Check it out right now on my Twitter, at Brian Alvarez. And, of course, you can grab my, uh, my cameo, F4W Online. Boy, if you want a cameo, have I got the account for you. Don't be paying that big money for a Chris Rock who's going to insult one of your loved ones, probably charge you an exorbitant amount of money, and then, you know, it'll be over and done with in 33 seconds. I'll give you your 50 bucks worth. F4W Online on Cameo. Don't miss out, everybody. And that's it. We'll talk to you next time. Wrestling Observer Live.